Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is episode four in a five part series on building an electric skateboard. In this episode, I'm focusing on programming the VESC. To do that, I'm using the VESC tool on an Android based tablet. The key to making this happen is a Bluetooth module, and I'll make sure I link this part in the description below. The cool thing about this is it allows me to make changes a lot easier than it would be if I had to connect a USB cable every time. The first step in the process is to program the motors. The first thing I'm going to do is just reset everything to defaults just to make sure we're starting with a clean slate. Since I'm using this vest for an electric skateboard, I'll be selecting the medium outrunner option. This warning here is just letting you know that there is a possibility if you select the wrong option that you could damage or ruin your motor. The next bit here is about the battery. So before we get to programming the motor, I have to select some options for the battery that I'm using. In this build, I'm using Samsung 30Q cells in a 6S3P battery. So those are the options I'm selecting in this section here. It's important to note that these settings could be different for everyone. Unless you're using the same cells in the same configuration that I am, these settings will be different. The way I calculated these numbers was by looking at the data sheet for the batteries. The capacity of these batteries is 3000 milliamps per cell. Since I have three cells in parallel, I will multiply that number by three to get 9000 milliamps. The other number to pay attention to on the data sheet here is the maximum amps of discharge current. For this battery pack, again, since I have three cells in parallel, I'll be multiplying this number of 15 by three to get a maximum of 45 amps for this battery pack. And just to be on the safe side, I'm setting the number here to 40 amps just to give me a five amp buffer, just so I'm not pushing the battery to its limit um, to hopefully give it a little bit more life. After entering the wheel diameter, I'll now begin the run detection test on the motors. The purpose of this test is to make sure that the motors and the VESC are communicating correctly, but also for the VESC to get the information from the motors to make sure it has the right specifications. After the test is complete, the most important number that I'm gonna pay attention to is the motor amperage. Uh, I'm gonna cross-reference this with the data sheet from the motor itself to make sure that the VESC is reading the motor correctly to make sure that there's no issues with burning out the motor or anything like that. The data sheet here shows that this motor can handle 34 amps. The VESC is reading just slightly over 32 amps and just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna set it down to 30 amps. That's going to ensure that I'm not pushing the motor to the max every time I do use full throttle and that should hopefully help this motor last a little bit longer. These next couple of steps are probably the most important part during the setup process. The battery max current cannot be higher than what your battery can actually handle. So my battery can handle 45 amps of continuous discharge and so I've set it at 40 amps just to be on the safe side. And so the same thing applies for the battery current max region. Negative 60 is a little bit too high and so I'm going to drop this number down and then adjust it accordingly if need be after I test the board. The next part here relates to the motors themselves. This number here, the VESC actually acquired when it ran the run detection test from the motors. And so what I'm going to do is just lower this slightly just to make sure I'm not pushing the motor to the maximum. And again, the same thing will apply for the motor maximum brake. I'm gonna lower this number and then adjust it if need be, depending on how it reacts when I test. This next step is completely optional. What these numbers represent is when you're gonna have some lag in performance once the battery reaches a certain voltage. So by reducing the number of the battery voltage cutoff, that's gonna allow me just a slight bit more range before I start seeing any lag in performance. After I've checked and double checked to make sure all the settings are how I'd like them, the next most important thing to do is make sure you hit the right button. That's gonna make sure it writes to the VESC all the changes that we've made to these settings. After programming the motors, the next thing to do is to program the remote control. The VESC pretty much does all of the work here. You just have to follow some on-screen prompts and it walks you through the entire process.
There's a couple of cool things in this program or this app for the tablet. Uh, a lot of it just shows how the motor's functioning, um, a lot of different results for the power management and those kind of things. Um, it's not necessarily very practical to take this out while I'm riding, but there are some cool numbers that you can kind of get a good idea of how the board and the motors are performing. So that's it. That's the end of programming. Pretty simple, especially when using the Bluetooth module. And the best part about it is that if I need to make any changes, I can do that very, very quickly and easily. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments about this programming video, please make sure you leave those in the comments. If you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do that as well. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.